Hello and welcome to uh, our class on cultural practices uh, in sauerkraut management. My name is Mark Hoffman. I am the uh, small foods extension specialist at NC State University and also the viticulturist at NC State University. Um, so today we talk about the topic which is uh, a pretty big problem here in the southeast um, uh, due to a, a lot of factors and, and we have other talks in this webinar series which talk a lot more about the factors that are involved in sour rot like fruit flies and yeasts and pathogens and uh, damage uh, physical damage to the grapes um, we are mostly talking today about cultural practices and uh, I have a couple of points which I want to make but we will not go into the depth of disease cycle and um, and what conditions have to be right. That, if you wanna see that, you're gonna to have to look into other webinar series, uh, other webinar talks uh, as part of this Sour Road series. Um, so what we're gonna to do today is um, mostly talking about two things which are really dear to my heart, which I think are very underestimated in Sour Road management. Um, that the first thing uh, is always the site and cultivar selection. And I do want to emphasize that the site selection in the vineyard, especially in the Southeast, is extremely critical for a successful crop um, for a lot of different reasons. Sour rot is just one of the reasons why site selections are is, is extremely important, as well as the cultivar selection. And that usually goes together. So um, again, I want to make this point later a little bit, so we got a little bit more in depth. And then the second part we will talk about are some of the cultural practices which you can deploy to mitigate some sour rot damage if you already know that you have susceptible cultivars in your in your vineyard. So um, that's a lot to cover. I will take probably another 15 minutes, so I hope you can bear with me. Again, we're not going into disease cycle. We only we're really focusing on two aspects, site and cultivar selection, number one, and the second one is cultural practices, which might help to mitigate. And a lot of that will, will sound very familiar to you um, because we will talk about site selection and pruning and shoot thinning up our, our, our tools to mitigate sour rot incidents. And, um, but we will look at this from a different angle um, than we usually do. So let's first talk about site selection. And um, this, I show this slide a lot. This is a, this is a, this is a graph which uh, uh, is in our uh, uh, viticulture uh, uh, vineyard management uh, production guide in, in, uh, for North Carolina. Um, again, air drainage and airflow is, is extremely important in the vineyard, especially in the southeast for a lot of different reasons. Um, the first things you have to keep in mind is that a vineyard and a vine needs sunlight as well as good air drainage and good uh, microclimate around the uh, fruit zone and the clusters. So that is something which you always have to keep in mind and vineyard and site selection plays an important role in achieving that goal. And I can show you what I mean by that. Um, so First of all, let's let's think about your vineyard terrain, and this is this is a true for almost every vineyard in the in the state of North Carolina. Uh, it is very it is usually hilly terrain, and you're going to have to make sure that your vineyard is in an area where it, where airflow can be achieved for a lot of different reasons. Usually, we go from the aspect on it of you want to avoid cold damage or frost damage to buds. But there's also the aspect in summer that you do want to have increased airflow through your vineyard, especially in cultivars that are susceptible to sour rot. So there are a lot of different reasons why you do want to have that. Um, if you plant vineyards in the wrong area or in an area which is not very, um, uh, 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 doesn't have a very positive aspect on vineyard development, then you can have uh, severe damages to your vineyard in, in again in several areas over winter but also over summer here in North Carolina or in the southeast. Um, those areas would be where you don't achieve a lot of airflow or where you have like standing air in the winter or, or even in the summer. So especially areas where you do have uh, roadblocks like here where the air cannot flow out or you have a lot of vegetation where the air cannot flow out of the, vine uh, of the vineyard that 
will increase your chances for a lot of different pro problems, which you otherwise will be more uh, able to avoid. Again, we're talking about an integrated approach of management, not just one little thing. It is easier for you to manage those spots if the wines and the vineyard is in the correct location. Um, so uh, what that means is, in our case, of course, uh, you have an increased risk of uh, dying plants and split trunks and what we refer to cold damage, but also to frost damage in some of those areas. But in summer, you also have an increased chance of disease in those areas where you do not can achieve a lot of airflow and where you will have trouble to achieve a microclimate around your clusters. Um, and that incre incre also, also uh, entails sour rot. Unfortunately, it's very common in, 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 in the Southeast as one of the bunch rots, which we can find, botrytis or gray mold is another very uh, uh, common uh, disease we have in, in, in the Southeast as a bunch rot as well as bitter rot. And all those rots can be managed better if you have the right spot, the right cultivar and the right microclimate around your cluster. And that really starts with vineyard, uh, with decisions about where's your site and which cultivar you put in your site. So cultivars and site selection go hand in hand. And that is something which I yeah, haven't emphasized in the past that much, but it is uh, especially, it is clear for, 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 for everything you wanna achieve is that you can have a good site for some cultivars and the same site can be a not so good or a bad side for um, other cultivars. So you have to select, first of all, the cultivars that are appropriate for your region. So there's a regional uh, 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 climate and weather related um, uh, uh, limitations to what kind of cultivar you can grow in in your particular region. And we do have a, a, lot, a range of regions in North Carolina where we can grow several different cultivars. Um, often limitation is the high growing degree days we get over summer, the humidity we get, the disease pressure we have, and the relatively short growing season compared to other wine growing regions we have in North Carolina. So that is that is often a limiting factor for some of the cultivars. Uh, and again, if we go into the mountains of North Carolina, there will be other factors which are also limiting uh, the cultivar selection. So that always goes hand in hand with your site selection. You will have a lot of trouble if you select cultivars that are not, uh, not appropriate for your specific region. And um, if you select sour rot susceptible or more susceptible cultivars, uh, uh, and we will show you a list later of what that might be, then make sure that you really have a good spot in your vineyard uh, where you can achieve airflow through cultural practices like, like leaf pulling, for example, or leaf removal later in the, in the season. And um, as I said, the same site can be good for some cultivars, but not a good spot for other cultivars. So it's really highly criti critical that you make a local decision together with uh, extension and and uh, and advisors to find the right spot on your property and the right cultivar mix for that for that for that uh, uh, property. So that is very important that you go into your vineyard operation with an open mindset and really understand that you might have to compromise on your cultivar choice based on the location you are uh, uh, with your vineyard site. Very important, extremely important. That's the first step. Uh, in, in any management of any diseases, especially of sour rot, but also of frost damage and cold damage, uh, you have to be open-minded in your cultivar selection for your site. Um, so that's number one. Uh, we made a, not a comprehensive, but a pretty large list of cultivars, which, which uh, are um, uh, more or less uh, susceptible to sour rot, there is no really resistant grape to sour rot. So sour rot can occur if all the factors are correct in any cultivar. However, there are some cultivars which, because of their cluster architecture and their berry and their berry uh, skin thickness, are much more prone to to have sour rot than others because they are more prone to physical damage, berry damage. And those are marked here in red. Some of them are not very common in North Carolina. Some of them are very common in North Carolina. 
And those are usually the, the, the problem cultivars which we see every year uh, in, in the vineyard. So this list can be found in the fact sheet which accompanies this webinar series and, um, and a lot of more things as well. Um, so I wanna, I wanna point out a couple of the main troublemakers in, in, in North Carolina for, for, for sour rot. And on the top of that list is for sure Riesling uh, and Riesling and more Riesling. Riesling is one of, it has a very tight uh, cluster compactness. It has very thin skins and, um, and it is a, a cultivar which we see in almost every vineyard in the, in, in the Southeast having problems with sour rot in almost every year. So it's not, it's, if you plant Riesling, there's a very high chance that you will encounter sour rot problems in your, in your specific site, even if you have a very good site and even if you apply cultural and chemical uh, management um, as, you, as you're supposed to, to do. So that is something which you do have to keep in mind. And often Riesling harvest is then decided by, um, by, by uh, the stage of the disease in the field rather than by berry chemistry. And you have to make a lot of comp compromises on berry chemistry, especially Briggs levels are not where they're supposed to be. And acid is probably too high and you still have to uh, harvest that Riesling because otherwise it will literally um, rot on the vine and then you don't have any harvest. So that is something which you do have to keep in mind. And, and if you plant Riesling, you might wanna uh, think about uh, lower harvest targets than you usually would have because you will have to account for, for some percentage of sour rot every year in, in, in your vineyard. Uh, sour rot harvest, if you do harvest by hand, is also a red, it's a little bit more cost intensive because usually you would, the crew would, would try to like um, uh, separate uh, rotted uh, material from not rotted material so that you do have more cleaner material in your harvest bin. That is, takes an additional step and there's an additional time which you also have to account for in your uh, budget. So Riesling is on the top of that list. Pinots are for several reasons on that list. Um, as uh, my predecessor uh, said uh, very correctly, there is a no in Pinot uh, for several reasons. Um, but in our case, it's also very thin skinned, compact uh, cluster, uh, definitely prone for sour rot as well um, in, in, in North Carolina, in the Southeast. Um, generally, I would not recommend to, to grow any Pinots unless you have a very experienced vineyard manager or you are a very experienced vineyard manager. Uh, it's gonna be a, a cultivar which you have to stay a lot on top of and will give you again, a lot of different problems in the vineyard, even if you're an experienced vineyard manager. Um, Chardonnay, another one, very common cultivar, often gets sour rot uh, in, in, in North Carolina as well. Um, better to manage than Riesling though. And uh, uh, Vignolis is not very, very common in North Carolina. Soft Blanc, Witztramina can show, uh, show frequently uh, sour rot as well. But those are the, like, the main troublemakers in our state so far. Um, some of them are better to manage than others. Uh, the more tolerant ones, which usually don't show a lot of sour rot, are things like Chardonnay, which is a, is a hybrid, Cap Franc, Cap Sauf, uh, Petit Vedot, Petit Menseng, Seval, Serra, and Vidal, and a lot of others, which if you apply good management practices and you do all the things you need to do in terms of cultural and chemical control, will be much less likely to show sour rot in some of the years. So again, there's no resistant cultivar, everything, everybody can show sour rot, but again, we, we find in our climate, in our state, that the cultivars which are showed right now show more often sour rot incidents than others. So that's very important to keep in mind, and that's a big part of your already management uh, 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 approach is site selection and cultivar selection. So now, there are some cultural practices to, to approach sour rot as well. And one of them is of course, pruning and shoot thinning. That is something which I feel needs to be emphasized a little bit more because the people who touch every single vine are the people who really take care of your wines. And that's usually your pruning crew. And, uh, and shoot thinning goes really hand in hand with pruning. And, um, and that can may have a huge impact on your sour rot development, depending on how many shoots you leave, especially in the VSP system. 
And, um, and then the second part, which, we, which I want to talk about is fruit zone and leaf removal, fruit zone leaf removal. Again, especially in these P system, but usually in other systems as well, just to make sure that you do have create enough microclimate and also open up a spray, uh, 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 the fruit zone for more spray penetration um, in, in the summer. So pruning and shoot thinning, um, I don't want to go into detail because we can have a whole class or several classes just about pruning and shoot thinning and, and grapes. And we actually, in fact, we do have several class, classes every year in pruning and shoot thinning and grapes. Um, the typical takeaway for us is if you do have uh, one of those cultivars which are more prone to sour rot, um, you want to approach a really a balanced pruning strategy. You do not want to stress out the wine more than necessary. You do. Uh, want to avoid any pruning with big cuts. That's a very general uh, 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 rule. And, and there's, there are techniques which allow you to do that over time. And you do want to make sure that you have a spur distance that leaves enough airspace between the spurs so that you do have later more possibility to create spray penetration and create a microclimate around the cluster. So that's really important. And uh, you do want to also stay on top of your shoot thinning, especially in those cultivars. I know sometimes, in, especially in our climate, shoot thinning comes on top of each other. If that, if that is all the cultivars come on top of each other, if that's the case, focus on your sour rot uh, uh, cultivars first, because the shoot thinning process will, will make a big difference later how much you can open up your canopy and how much airflow you can allow through uh, your cluster. So that's really, really important to, to understand that this is already starting, your sour rot management already starts very early in the season, um, basically with pruning and later with shoot thinning. Um, also, please attend our virtual and in-person pruning and shoot thinning classes. We do have them every winter from January to April. We, uh, we stepped up the game and we invited uh, a, a, a uh, international pruning specialist to, to our classes. It makes a lot of sense for you to, to, to uh, attend them. They're very intense, very long classes. There are three, three classes, each class is three hours. And then we do have a pruning workshop in person, um, but it will help you a lot to get, stay on top of pruning technology and, and, and new pruning techniques. And I and, uh, highly recommend to do this. Those are very good classes. And um, if you want to find out more about those classes, I show you at the end the links where you can find them and um, where you can uh, sign up for them. Um, so we're going to focus today a little bit on uh, one other cultural practice that's fruit zone leaf removal. And in this picture here, you can see a fruit zone, uh, the, the difference between a fruit zone that where we had leaf removal on the left side of this picture and then a fruit zone where we didn't remove leaves on the right side of this picture. And you can see here that in this side, we do have a lot of airspace and we do have a lot of free space for the air to, to circulate around. While we here have a lot of dead space and a lot of, it's harder to like have airspace here. So this is of course a very drastic fr uh, fruit, uh, fruit zone leaf removal uh, that was for a research trial. There are uh, leaf pullers and, and leaf removers uh, that can be used. They leave a couple of leaves still on the vine, but you still get an opening up of your canopy in this side. So post bloom fruits on leaf removal is extremely important, can be done mechanically. I highly recommend if you have a larger acreage, you should do it mechanically. It saves a lot of cost and is highly important for sour rot control. Extremely important for bunch rot control in general, botrytis control, but also for sour rot control. And I can show you some numbers from research which was done here in North Carolina in, uh, in collaboration with, with, with the UGA program. And we uh, had several treatments here. I, no means no leaf removal. So that was what I showed you there was uh, on the right-hand side of course, we didn't have any leaf removal in those treatments. We had a mechanical leaf removal and then we had hand fruits on leaf removals where we removed four or six leaves on the primary shoots. Um, in each treatment. And, uh, and you could see here that the sour rot harvest ratings at harvest, the sour, this was in Chardonnay, and the sour rot in harvest was in those treatments where we didn't have any uh, uh, leaves removed, we had 40% 
incidence of sour rot. While we could reduce that in any of the leaf removal treatments, be it a mechanical or be it by hand, to like 25 to 22% of incidence. So that's a drastic change in incidence between those two treatments and as well the severity. And that means how much of what uh, uh, was affected uh, um, of, uh, of the overall clusters. We found about 2% in the no treatment and it was a little bit lower in the other treatments. However, the incidence was very much, much lower in the treatments which had leaf removals for the snow. The same with uh, botrytis. As an other uh, rating, we had much higher incidence in those with uh, without leaf removal versus those with leaf removal. So again, leaf removing leaf removing is a very big um, part of cultural um, management of sour rot. Um, sour rot itself is is a uh, important. Uh, disease complex here in, in North Carolina, and more often than not, uh, vineyard manager and winemaker have to make compromises on uh, food quality because of sour rot. And again, in those cultivars which I showed that are prone to sour rot, even big, even even if you do all the management practices which you learn in this webinar, uh, there will be still a risk of sour rot in those cultivars. Um, if you want to find more information, including this, uh, including other webinar videos, or uh, including the, the flyers, or including class schedules for 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 like the the the, the year, please visit uh, grapes.ces.ncc.edu. You will find um, all the information there. Um, another resource uh, is smartfoods.org. That is a consortium for the southeast. Where we, for, where we have uh, several uh, updated IPM uh, management guides, and uh, one of them is for, for vineyards. So that, that is a document which is updated every year. A very, it's for free, and I highly recommend everyone who has a vineyard should have this document and should follow this document as well. And then, of course, the PDIC is uh, taking samples, disease samples, if you want to send disease samples there, but it's probably better in sour to just send a picture to the specialist or to the extension agent um, of your county. And that is it for me. We only had 15 minutes to do this, so uh, I hope uh, that was helpful. Please send me an email if you have any questions. Um, you also can visit me under my website and follow us on Instagram. And uh, I hope you do. And with that, I uh, am happy to answer your questions anytime. And thank you very much for your attention.